Hey everyone, welcome back to Rewilding the Future. Today we're talking about the Chinese alligator, Alligator sinensis, is one of only two living species of alligator, the other being the American alligator. It is a critically endangered reptile and one of the smallest of all crocodilians. Unlike its American cousin, it has a stocky body, a short, broad snout, and a generally more armored appearance, with bony plates extending across its belly as well as its back. Its skin is dark gray to black, providing camouflage in murky waters and dense vegetation. Adults rarely exceed 2 meters in length, with most individuals averaging 1.5 to 2.1 meters and weighing around 36 to 45 kilograms, making them much smaller than American alligators. Historically, Chinese alligators were widespread across much of eastern China, inhabiting lakes, rivers, swamps, and wetlands. Today, their natural habitat is highly restricted to the lower Yangtze River basin in Anhui province. They prefer slow-moving bodies of fresh water with dense vegetation and muddy banks, where they dig burrows for shelter. These burrows, which can be quite elaborate, provide protection from cold winters and hot summers, as the species is highly sensitive to temperature extremes. Chinese alligators are opportunistic carnivores with a diet that depends on availability. Their primary food sources include fish, amphibians, small mammals, birds, and invertebrates, such as snails and crustaceans. Juveniles feed largely on insects and small aquatic animals, gradually shifting to larger prey as they grow. Unlike larger crocodilians, Chinese alligators rarely attack large animals, given their modest size and jaw strength. Chinese alligators are generally solitary, with individuals maintaining burrows and territories along riverbanks. They communicate using body postures, hisses, and vocalizations, especially during mating season. Breeding occurs in late spring and early summer, with males bellowing to attract females. Females build large nests of vegetation, usually in June or July, and lay between 10 to 40 eggs. The nest's decomposition helps regulate egg temperature, but the success rate is strongly tied to environmental stability. Hatchlings emerge after about 70 days, often with the female guarding them. Like other crocodilians, sex is temperature dependent, with warmer nests producing males and cooler nests producing females. Adult Chinese alligators have few natural predators due to their armored skin and defensive abilities, but juveniles are highly vulnerable. Birds of prey, large fish, and even mammals such as raccoon dogs may prey upon hatchlings. The greatest threat by far, however, has been human activity, particularly habitat destruction and hunting. The lineage of Chinese alligators stretches back tens of millions of years. Fossil evidence shows that alligators were once widespread across much of Eurasia and North America. During the Pleistocene, alligator populations extended further north, taking advantage of warmer interglacial periods. The ancestors of alligator sinensis diverged from the American alligator millions of years ago, adapting to the cooler temperate environments of East Asia. Over time, as climate shifted and human activity expanded, their range contracted drastically. Once distributed widely across eastern and central China, the Chinese alligator now survives in only a few small wetlands in the Anhui province. Historically, they may have extended into the Yangtze River floodplains, Hubei, and possibly even further south. Human population growth, agriculture, and wetland drainage caused their range to collapse during the past few centuries, leaving only fragmented pockets of survivors. In Chinese culture, the alligator has long held symbolic meaning. Ancient Chinese texts and legends often reference dragon-like creatures, and some historians believe the Chinese alligator may have inspired aspects of the dragon myth. Their presence in rivers and wetlands linked them to fertility, rain, and agricultural prosperity. Unfortunately, as wetlands were converted into rice paddies, the species came to be seen more as a pest than a guardian. Today, the wild population of Chinese alligators is extremely small, with estimates of fewer than 800 individuals surviving in the wild. Captive breeding programs, however, have been more successful, with thousands of individuals now living in reserves and zoos. Reintroduction efforts have begun, but restoring viable populations is challenging due to ongoing habitat loss and human encroachment. Rewilding the Chinese alligator is both a challenge and a necessity. Conservationists are working to restore natural wetlands in eastern China and create protected reserves where alligators can thrive. 
Captive-bred individuals are being released into carefully managed habitats to re-establish wild populations. Success depends on balancing human agricultural needs with ecosystem restoration, as many of the wetlands that once supported alligators are now rice fields. International cooperation, cultural education, and ecotourism are also being explored as ways to raise awareness and provide economic incentives for local communities to protect these ancient reptiles. The Chinese alligator is not only a living relic of the age of dinosaurs, but also a symbol of how human activity can endanger entire lineages, and how careful conservation and rewilding can bring them back. Its survival story represents hope for wetland ecosystems in Asia, and the possibility of humans coexisting with species that have walked the earth for millions of years. The Chinese alligator is one of the last living links to an ancient world, a species that has survived ice ages, shifting rivers, and the rise of civilizations. Today, its survival depends on us. By restoring wetlands, protecting their habitats, and supporting rewilding programs, we can ensure that these living dragons continue to glide through the waters of China for generations to come. The story of the Chinese alligator reminds us that when we fight for the wild, we fight for our shared future. What do you think? Should we bring the Chinese alligator back to more of its ancient range through rewilding? Subscribe to Rewilding the Future for more stories of lost species returning to the wild.